guys happy monday it's time for a full week of workouts and it's about 2 p.m on this fine monday i am done with all of my meetings which is exciting but i still have so much work ahead of me i'm like probably gonna be working till like 10 or 11 tonight and we've officially started the process of moving which means i have a bunch of stuff that i've listed on facebook marketplace i'm selling a bunch of stuff on poshmark i I'm just on my phone constantly messaging with people about buying and selling items. And Ben is constantly on the phone with movers. So it's kind of turning into a chaos, a chaos den over here. And I'm kind of thinking today is just gonna be like a classic glutes and hamstring workout, like hypertrophy focused glutes and hamstrings, hitting compounds like deadlifts, hip thrusts, maybe some RDLs. I feel like outfit is gonna be probably pretty standard at this point. I feel like I wear the same thing all the time, but Alpha Elite Amplify sports bra, Alpha Elite Amplify shorts, the biker length, and then I'll probably throw my Alpha Elite cropped sweatshirt, my Vans for the flat bottoms, and we'll call it a day. So I'm gonna get dressed, walk my little butt to the gym, and I'll catch in with you guys. I'll catch in. Well, not, um, no, I'll catch up with you guys then. All right, it's gluten hammies time. So I started this workout with basically like a buy-in or an activation movement on the hip abductor machine. I did like three sets of very high reps at like a low weight. So three sets of 30, kept the weight really low and just tried to wake up my glutes and get them really activated. And then I moved into deadlifts. I started with a lighter weight for me for conventional deadlifts, just focusing on warming up getting the movement down, making sure my form was in check and everything felt warmed up and ready to go before I moved into like a heavier working weight for me. Um, so I added on a little bit of weight on each side and then this is where like my real working sets started. So I did a warm up set and then I did about four working sets. Um, and at this weight, I don't really need straps. So I was able to kind of bang out like eight reps without straps, but by that last rep, I was really, really struggling. So. You know, you want to kind of leave like one to two reps in the tank, um, and this weight is like a perfect place for me to do that. So I did about three sets of six to eight reps here, pushing for that eighth rep. And then on the last set, I decided to just add some weight and really see what I could do. So I added weight to each side, grabbed my straps, and managed to get about like five reps on this weight without breaking form, but it's always kind of fun to just like test weight at the end and like see how hard you can kind of push. Gotta buckle myself in, but then it's time for hip thrusts. I love this machine because it's so easy to set up. I ended up doing six sets of six to eight reps, and I always add like a one to two second hold at the top of the movement to really squeeze my glutes. I do a lot of sets on hip thrusts because your glutes are big and strong and they can handle it. Um, but you can always drop it down to four or five sets if that's better for you. This is a very handy machine, but it's basically for like a suitcase RDL. Um, so you rack the weights on each side instead of bringing them down in front. And I focus on going really slow during the eccentric and then kind of exploding up and going fast in the concentric phase of the movement. I usually do about five sets of eight to 10 reps here, focusing on feeling a really strong stretch in my hamstrings and a nice squeeze in my glutes. It's time for a very spicy hamstring movement. So this is an assisted single leg, straight leg deadlift. So you're gonna keep a little bit less bend in your knee and your focus is really on feeling a stretch in your hamstrings. It's more about hammies than it is glutes. And then I do it single leg and I use the bench to sort of like assist my other leg so I can really concentrate on working one leg at a time. I usually only do like three sets of eight to 10 on each leg for this. 
I'm gonna stay on the exact same bench and then just rep out some body weight hip thrusts. I do three sets of like 30 reps, almost just as like a glute burner at this point. And because I'm already at the bench, I might as well just bang them out. I focus really on squeezing my glutes and kind of stretching my glutes at the bottom to feel this movement as much as I can. And those 30 reps take you like almost to failure. This is a tricep from hell. You're going to start with eight standard seated hamstring curls. Pick a weight that's challenging, but not too challenging because you do have a lot of reps to get through. And then you're gonna drop the weight and move right into eight reps on your right leg. No rest. And then keeping the same weight, you're gonna switch legs and do eight reps on your left leg. No rest. After those eight reps, you get to rest for about a minute before you do the whole thing again. I did three rounds. Hi guys, happy Tuesday. I'm sleepy, it's like 7.50 here, um, and I don't have a meeting until 9.30, but I'm loving this outfit I have on. This is my like Alphalete, don't mind the nail glue that I have on there. Um, a little Alphalete like Amplify crop, it's like a little zip crop, it's so cute. And then I have my Amplify leggings per usual, and then I'm wearing the Surface Wrap bra underneath. Um, one of my favorite outfits, so it's gonna be a good workout. But yeah, just wanted to say hi, good morning. I'll see you guys at the gym. This angle is such trash, I am so sorry. But what I was doing was a seated single arm row. And we have this like kind of cable machine, but it's its own machine thing at my gym. So I just do it on that. And this was sort of an activation exercise to help wake up my lats. Sometimes I have sleepy lats and they need a little bit of love. So I did like three sets of eight to 10 reps at a lighter weight to just wake everything up on each side. Now that my lats are awake, I'm moving into a landmine row. I love these. I did five sets of eight to 10 reps, focusing on keeping my spine really neutral, my core nice and tight, stretching through my lats, and then using my entire back to pull the weight up and get that little pinch right in between my shoulder blades. Staying on that landmine machine, I just stripped some of the weight off and then I did four sets of eight to 10 landmine high pulls, focusing on keeping a solid 90 degree angle, keeping my spine nice and neutral and pulling that weight up to my shoulder and using my rear delt to move the weight. And I did about four sets on each side. This move is spicy and so good for the core and your back. You kind of feel it in your entire upper body. It's a landmine 180 degree twist and you're basically using your core to twist the weight up overhead, but it also takes some shoulder and back involvement too. Um, I did only three sets here, but I did about 10 twists total. Next up is a classic, bent over single arm row. Go a little bit heavier on this because your lats can handle more weight than you think. And I always think about pulling my elbow back toward my hip to engage more of my back than like my shoulder. Don't forget to do both sides. I did four sets of like eight reps on each side for this. Next up is a classic wide grip lat pull down. I try not to use momentum and I try to think about spreading the handles or the bar apart as I'm pulling the weight down. And I think about bringing my elbows down to my hips. I usually do about four or five sets of eight to 10 reps. And at this point in the workout, my back is burning. So this is like twice as challenging. Sometimes also I will drop the weight to get out those last couple of reps just because I don't want to compromise form. Next up, it's time for a spicy little superset. So I did eight reps of a straight arm pull down right into bicep curls. Kind of just hogged a whole cable machine and set up 
both attachments, one on each side of the cable, so that I could go right from the straight arm pull downs into the cable bicep curls. The thing about cable bicep curls is that it makes it really hard to use momentum and the constant tension just makes them burn so good. So I did about three rounds of this superset total and I only rested after I was done with both exercises. So to finish the workout, I did some core. This is an oblique twist machine. You don't have to use a machine for this, but my gym has one, so it makes it really easy. And I usually do about 12 twists on each side, and then I just swap sides every other. And I really focus on using my core to twist my knees instead of just swinging my knees back and forth. I've noticed that core is a lot about just being really conscious of using your core and not letting other muscle groups take over, and that's made such a difference in my core strength. It's Wednesday, my dudes! Anyway. Oh, I'm so... What am I? I don't know how I feel today. I just don't feel emotionally great. <laughs> and I think it's because I'm a bit stressed and I just feel overwhelmed. I feel like my brain is full. I feel like I have so many thoughts and ideas and things just floating in and out all at once. It's really hard for me to feel focused and like I'm getting anything done, which is frustrating. Um, but it's about 2 p.m. It's like 1.40. So I'm gonna get changed and I'm gonna go to the gym. And I feel like I need to get my heart rate up today. I feel like I need to do like a conditioning circuit with some like higher intensity movements, lower weight, and just kind of sweat and, and pant and be panting. I think that's what I need to do today for my mind and for my body, um, which will be fun. Those used to be my bread and, butter, bread and butter for a while. I really didn't ever lift more than like 30 pounds on any lift and I just like loved conditioning circuits and I still love them, nothing has changed. But I'm gonna get dressed, as you can tell. I'm in my comfies still. Um, so I'm gonna get into some workout clothes. I think they're in the dryer. And then I'm gonna go to the gym and I will see you guys there. I forgot to film this the other days, but I always start all of my workouts with some stretching, some dynamic stretching, mobility work to just kind of like wake everything up, especially if I'm sitting at a desk and on a day like this where I went to the gym later in the afternoon, you need to open up your hips and like all of your joints that have just been rusted together from sitting down. So I always do like five or so minutes of this at the beginning of my workouts. Then I warmed up a little bit more on the carousel bike. I did like two minutes on the bike to just get my heart rate going. On high intensity days or conditioning days, it's very jarring to go from like stretching and mobility right into like very intense exercise. So I like to kind of just like wake my heart up too and kind of be like, hey girl, you're about to sweat and it's, it's gonna suck for a little bit. So like get ready, you know? It looks like I haven't moved, but I am beginning my first superset. I'm cranking up the intensity, I'm pedaling a little bit harder, and the first superset is 30 seconds on the Calisol bike at like max effort, to the point where at the end of the 30 seconds, like your heart can't go anymore, you're done. So 30 seconds there, and then right into plate sit up to press. So I do about like 10 of these right after the 30 seconds on the Calisol bike with no rest in between. That's your first superset. So after this exercise, you can rest for 30 seconds and then you start the whole thing again at the top. And I do five rounds of this superset total. Then we're gonna do a tri set. You're gonna start on the Calisol bike, but you're only gonna use your arms. So stick your feet up on those little pedal things and just crank with your arms for 30 seconds. This is truly the most brutal thing that I've ever experienced. I don't do it often because it's terrible. And then when you're done with that, you're gonna go right into these kind of like back and forth med ball overs. It's like a CrossFit movement. I love it. It's a lot of glute. Think about driving up from your glute and using your legs to power the toss. It's less about your arms and more about your legs. 30 seconds of that, and then you're gonna finish with 30 seconds of alternating sprinter sit-ups. 
go all the way back down into the extension of the movement. So it's like a full extension into the crunch each leg at a time. And I do about 30 seconds of this and then you rest. And I only rest for about 30 seconds. So you wanna keep your heart rate up. At this point, I am screaming, crying, throwing up to a T. But the next superset is 30 seconds of never ending rope pulls. I do these standing, thinking about really using my back to pull the rope down one arm at a time. 30 seconds of that right into kettlebell swings. And for the kettlebell swings, you wanna really think about like max effort. You're going for like speed and reps here. It's less about weight and more about speed and reps. Driving with your glutes, keeping that spine neutral, that core tight for 30 seconds. And then you can rest for 30 seconds and start the whole thing again. And I did five rounds of that. Last superset of this workout is 30 seconds of burpees. I am sorry, I really am. I love them, they're so effective guys, honestly. Chest the floor, really exploding through the top of the movement, 30 seconds. You can have a couple seconds to like cry, regroup, sob, whatever you need to do. And then you're gonna go right into plank plate drags. So you're gonna alternate dragging the plate across slowly, one arm at a time, and you wanna keep yourself as stable as possible. Imagine somebody balancing like a plate full of food on your back and you don't wanna spill it. So the key is to go slow and steady here, thinking about stability. And I did 30 seconds of that, then rested for 30 seconds and went back to the burpees. And I did, I think, five rounds total on this too. And then as a cool down, I did like 10 minutes of walking on one of these like manual treadmill things. I would kind of alternate between like a heavier setting where I was more of like pushing a sled or walking uphill and then a lighter setting where I was kind of walking at a normal pace. I honestly just feel like after like high intensity days or conditioning days, I need to like give my body time to become one with the world again. I can't just like finish burpees and then like leave the gym. I need a couple minutes of just like walking and like listening to a podcast to just like calm down. So that's what I was doing here. Hi guys. Happy Thursday. I am, I literally have, let me set you down. So I have only like an hour in between meetings. So I'm gonna scurry, I'm gonna scurry down to my apartment gym, hope that it's not too crowded and that I can get in a push workout. Yesterday I did the conditioning, like sort of conditioning hybrid, um, which was very high intensity. So I think today I'm going to basically keep it like a lower medium intensity workout and just do upper body push, chest, shoulders, triceps, and just really focus on strength and control and try to be in and out in an hour. So right now I'm wearing my Alpha Elite like lounge shorts. They're super comfy cozy, but I'm not gonna work out in them. So I'm gonna throw on these bottoms match the sports bra. They're both the surface collection. I love the surface collection, especially for like upper body days. I don't know, something about training upper body in like a very cool sports bra, I just love. So I'm gonna get changed. I'm gonna run down to the gym and I will see you guys there. Let's do it. I'm starting with warming up, doing some mobility work, kind of just like stretching out my back and my sides, doing some body weight push-ups to wake up my chest muscles. Um, like I said earlier, I do this before every workout. I kind of forgot to film some of them, but I just focus on like going slow and really waking up and stretching every single muscle. And then I also like to activate my core sometimes by just doing some plank shoulder taps, just anything to kind of wake my core up. So first up is dumbbell bench presses. I love these. I feel like I just get like a deeper range of motion with these and I can really kind of focus on squeezing my chest to move the weight. So I usually do about like four sets of eight to 10 reps on these because my upper body burns out really quickly. So if I want to do other push movements, I have to kind of be mindful of my sets and reps. Then I stay at the same bench, I just pop it up to sitting and I do standard overhead presses. I drop the weight a little bit, focus on really squeezing my shoulders to push that weight up overhead and keeping my core tight. And I do four sets of eight to 10 on these as well. Then I did like a standard barbell bench press. Um, this was kind of my top set. 
So I did one warm up set before this at a lighter weight and then I put on a bit more weight and went a little bit heavier. And I did about three sets at my heavy weight and then I actually dropped the weight back down again and did another two sets higher reps at like a lighter weight for me. So I upped the reps to like 10 reps here. This is a spicy little tri set. So I grabbed two light dumbbells and I did eight to 10 lateral raises, focusing on really using my shoulders to lift the weight instead of swinging it. And then without resting, I moved right into these upright alternating raises. These work kind of like your pecs and your shoulders. So I did eight to 10 of those with no rest. And then once I was finished with those, I went right into T raises, which is kind of like one front raise and one, la one lateral raise. And you just kind of alternate back and forth and I did eight to 10 of these. And then after I was finished with these, I rested for like a minute and started it again. Then I moved into a cable chest fly. I love these so much on push days. I feel them so much in my pecs. So I kind of think about like wrapping my arms around a barrel as tightly as I can to really get like my muscle connection going. And I did three sets of like 15 reps here. I like to go lighter on the weight and heavier on the reps. So I stayed on the same cable machine, just swapped out a different attachment and did three sets of 10 tricep pushdowns. Focus on really squeezing my triceps to push the weight down, going nice and slow, trying not to use momentum um, and trying to keep my core really tight and my spine nice and neutral. And for the last movement of this workout, I did some single arm tricep extensions. So you just kind of take the bottom of the cable and push your arm out using your tricep to kind of move the weight. And I did like three sets of 15 on each arm. It's Friday, TGIF, we made it. This week has honestly just been one of those weeks where I feel kind of crushed emotionally <laughs> from work, <laughs> which happens sometimes. I think I'm realizing about myself that I am like very, I mean, I've always known this about myself. It's not revolutionary, but I don't know. I get very stressed with like interpersonal work dynamics and like little things will stress me out. And I think it's just because I want to make sure that like I'm doing a good job and I want to make sure that I'm like noticed for doing a good job. Sorry, this is kind of like a heart to heart. Um, but when I work with people that are also like very involved in everything and super hands-on like I am, I almost feel like a weird sense of competitiveness with them. Um, even though they're amazing and they do really good work, I just feel like their success will take away from my success. And like saying that out loud, I know that that's not how it works. Like you can have two people that are both extremely active and proactive on a project and they both are successful. But in my head, it's like one or the other. So this week has been very much testing me in that because I am needing to like rework that thought process that I had in my head. Um, corporate America, baby. It does that to you. But it's Friday, so that's all that matters. I think we're doing laundry today. Laundry day. So it means all of my favorite workout clothes are clean. Wow, my arm is tired. That upper body workout yesterday. I can't hold the camera. Um, but that being said, I'm very excited because I think today I'm gonna do quads and glutes because I did kind of like hamstrings and glutes all the way on Monday. So I've given my lower body like a lot of rest. Um, so that means I can go hard on quads and glutes. But first I need to pick an outfit. Blue shorts, red crop, alpha elite as always. And I will see you guys at the gym. Happy Friday. So I did a lot of foam rolling before this workout, mostly because the night before I slept on my back really wrong and I had this like weird knot in between my shoulder blades. But while I was foam rolling, I decided to just do my legs, my butt, everything. And then I did some static stretching to really open up my hips um, before my squats. I find that that really, really helps my squats is my ankle mobility and making sure my hips are open. Then it was squat time, baby. So I always start with like two warm up sets for squats. Um, and my first set is usually like my lightest weight going slow and really focusing on like activating my glutes and pushing up through my heels. I always think about spreading the floor with my feet while I'm doing this movement. Um, and then I'll add on a little bit more weight and do another kind of like warm up set at a slightly heavier weight. 
before I really tack on the weight and get into my working sets. And I usually do about three working sets at like five to seven reps. And by the end, like those, that last rep, I probably have one more in the tank, but I always kind of like to stop like one rep short of failure on these. And then after the barbell squats, I moved right into goblet squats. And I feel like goblet squats are like a sneaky glute builder that people don't talk enough about. So I usually do like five sets of eight to 10 reps on these at a slightly lighter weight, but really focusing on pushing up through my heels, spreading my feet and really using my glutes. Moving right into walking lunges. These are truly, I think the most brutal exercise. They're, they're basically cardio, but I always take a shorter stance because it helps me really use my quads instead of my glutes. So by kind of keeping those steps short, I'm pushing up more through my quads. Um, and I usually try to do like 12 to 14 steps total. All right, time for a superset. I grabbed two kettlebells and I did like eight to 10 standard Bulgarian split squats, holding one kettlebell in each hand, focusing on really kind of driving up through the middle of my foot and getting that nice deep stretch in my glute at the bottom of the movement. And then the moment I was done, I went right into eight to 10 body weight Bulgarian split squats on that same leg with no rest. And then you can rest and do it on the other leg. I added in a little bit of plyo on this day. So I did a superset of like eight to 10 box jumps as the first movement, focusing on being light and springy and landing lightly on the box um, and kind of driving up as quickly as I can with a lot of power. And then right after those eight to 10 reps, I kind of flipped around and sat down on the box and did reverse crunches into squat jumps. So for the crunch, you're really using your abs to bring your knees to your elbows. And then you're going to stand up and jump as high as you can. And I did like eight to 10 of those. And then as a finisher, I got on the leg extension machine, kept the weight really low and just did three sets of 20 reps, basically just as a burnout. And by this point, my quads were literally toast. I was in so much pain. All right, so that was this week of workouts. This week, this week's workouts. That was this week's workouts. Um, it's now Sunday and I am just editing this video and I wanted to pop in and say hello. Thank you for watching. I hope you found it helpful. If you have any questions um, about, you know, how I train or like workout specific questions, feel free to leave them in the comments. If you have any questions about anything, you can leave them in the comments. And in terms of rest days, I've said this on my last week of workouts video. When I do rest days, I rest. Like I don't really even try to, I never count my steps if I'm being 100% honest. I have no idea if I get 10,000 steps a day, probably not. Um, and on my rest days, I don't really do like active recovery. I don't really like go for a bike ride or like go for a long walk. I honestly just blob around and let my body recover. Sometimes I'll use like the foam roller and that's kind of about it. So I keep it very chill on my rest days. Um, like today, I'm probably just gonna sit on the couch, drink some coffee, watch a movie, edit this video, and then that's it. I hope you guys enjoyed. I hope you have a good day and I love you all so much. Bye.